this water training we had to do, it was real. The purpose of the training is in the event that there were an over the water emergency. It's been 36 years since the last Top Gun movie, and it's safe to say that Top Gun Maverick was well overdue for its release back in April, receiving almost $1.5 billion from box office records. It's no surprise just why this film got so many positive reviews and rage. And with all the coordinated stunt work that went into this film, we want to look at just what it took to put this film together. We didn't have access to these aircraft forever, so every time an actor went up, we had to get the footage. We, we had to get the footage. Daytime, baby. Tom Cruise personally designed a three-month aviation training course for the new actors to become ready to handle riding in an F-18. To create the illusion that the actors were actually piloting the jets during flying scenes. From there, Tom designed this all-encompassing aviation training for all the actors. I started them out in a single-engine airplane to build up their spatial awareness inside the aircraft. Oh, wow. Average naval aviator does over the course of almost two years. They have worked hard. That was epic. I thought one would tap out. I thought for sure at least one would tap out. Nobody tapped out. I lost the bet. But before we get into these moments, some trivia. In the first Top Gun film, what is a character played by Kelly McGill's based on? Leave your answer in the comments down below and stick around to the end of the video to find out if your answer was correct. I wasn't ready to make a sequel until we had a special story worthy of a sequel and until technology evolved so we could delve deeper into the experience of a fighter pilot. The producers paid the Navy $11,000 per flight hour for FA-18E single seat and FA-18F dual seat Super Hornets and pilots to fly them. For external shots, real Navy pilots flew the E version. For shots of the actors in flight, the F version was used with the actual pilot in the front seat. And it's honestly incredible to know that the creators of this sequel were so dedicated to the film that they didn't fully do just CGI. In an interview with aviation YouTuber C.W. Lemion, one of the VFX artists on the special effects team, Fred Lynn stated that the use of CGI was extensive in the film with the F-14 and Su-57 visualized entirely by computer. As a scene, it was really good. And the details of the, like, you know, them going with the skunk works, the little skunk works thing on the stick, like yep. all that stuff was really cool. And I really appreciate it. And the second time you watch it, you start to pick out little details and sure. stuff, especially, sure. you know, now that I'm a dark star pilot on Microsoft Flight Sim, <laughs> no I kind of understand these things. Yeah. yeah, kind of a big deal. I passed the challenge. Aviation film like this has never been done. And Chester will never be done again. It's very important to me that it be practical that we actually put the camera right in there and shoot the sequences for real. That was the aim. That was always the goal. And I said, I'm not going to make this film unless we can accomplish that. The shirtless beach football montage had to be shot twice because Tom Cruise did not find the first version good enough. The reshoot placed additional pressure on the actors to get their ripped bodies back to reshoot the scene. Cast member Glenn Powell recounted, We shot it and that night we all went out for milkshakes and tater tots, just like Splurge and everybody grabbed a beer. And a week later, Tom's like, We gotta shoot it again. It wasn't good enough. We're gonna shoot it again and then everybody's back in the gym, day and night. And it's crazy to see, with how many of the shots were real, how long all the actors had to go through with extensive, careful training that included training almost like a soldier, and even some underwater training as well, where they were secured underwater and had to practice escaping their seat in the plane itself. There's various steps that the actors must become proficient at. Don't be afraid to do it like you mean it, do it like you're actually falling at 120 miles an hour. And they have to be able to do it. If they can't do it, they can't get in the F-18. Our actors went through three months of grueling training. The Navy says if you eject, you have to be able to survive in the water. So we had to go through that challenging underwater program. It's intense. You're flipped inverted and you're having to try and get out. But real quick, make sure you guys check out our Instagram page linked down in the description. There's a ton of interview moments and memes, so make sure you check it out and give us a follow. It's intense. You're flipped inverted and you're having to try and get out. They even go to explain how they got not one, but six cameras into a Navy plane. We worked with the Navy for over a year to design a system that would get the angles we wanted to get. 
from actors' bodies conveying the strain of sustaining G-forces in the air to jet wings flapping realistically and beyond, the practical imperfections captured on film give the cinematography of Maverick its unique texture and power. The limited time they had with these real Navy planes, the pressure was on to get the shot no matter what. This wasn't a regular film by no means, or even a normal action movie. Because those scenes were shot in a single pilot seat, the actors had to become their own directors in a way, hitting record on the camera, all while having to remember what scene they were shooting and remembering their lines. We kind of become our own director in a way. Okay, I'm rolling. Because we don't have any communications with anybody on the ground. For the actors, I had to build a training program for them. Their understanding of radios, of flying, of being in an aircraft, being in confined spaces where it's hot. Because you have responsibilities in that F-18. You're not just going for a ride. You're actually there and you have to learn certain things in case an emergency happens. The film was shot in IMAX format using IMAX certified Sony Venus 6K full frame cameras. Kaczynski explained that the team spent more than a year with Navy forces to use the IMAX cameras inside the cockpit with four cameras facing toward the actors and two facing forward, in addition to cameras mounted all over the exteriors of the aircraft. Anytime we put anything in the cockpit of an F-18, we have to be very clear what impact that's going to have. If those cameras come off under G, now you have something coming back. It had to go through all kinds of engineering and it had to be built to specifications. He wanted to make sure that um, technology had advanced enough to where we could put the cameras in the cockpit. Um, that was really important, so that's, that's what we did. These cameras are unbelievable, groundbreaking. They are specifically built for Top Gun. For most of the planes, including the FA-18EF, the production crew acquired 20 working aircraft from all over the country. Hindle said that Krasinski had made specifications for every detail to be designed, including the helmets, suits, props, and several others. How many people does it take to launch an F-18 off the carrier? 5,000, because any one person on that boat is not doing their job. Ultimately, that system breaks down. We're about to get dunked. There's all these different contraptions and, and things that like pull you through the water and like drop you into a tank. And according to Miles Teller, three of the six new actors threw up every day of filming in the jets. There's six new pilots in the in the story, and three out of the six puked like every day. Oh, great! <laughs> yeah, well, I was not I was not one of them. Yeah, I would have been one of them. And with all the scenes and aerial shots that they got, it's no wonder they decided to do it this way by teaching the actors how to drive the plane and what angles are the best with the cinematography. And by the time the film was completed, fans got to see it on the big screen and made it all the more worth it. I had to really teach them cinematography and the lighting so that they understood what's gonna look good on camera. All the training, 100% prepared. I'm very proud of what we all accomplished. With no sets or fake areas, it just made it that much more realistic, knowing that there was nothing fake about this film. When it came to the aerial shots and the ocean, the entire crew were actually in the middle of the ocean while training and filming. We got to live as sailors live, we ate their food, we slept in the bunks, we actually watched them launch aircraft, we got to be right there on the flight line. One of the things I didn't get to do on the first one was getting a cat shot on the carrier. I did on this. I'm getting catapulted off of the aircraft carrier. Tom Cruise was so hands-on with the film as he not only starred in it, but he was the producer. He actually accomplished something that had never been done before in a film. Before, it's something that only naval aviators get to do. Jerry Bruckheimer and I were made honorary naval aviators. We are part of the Navy, officially. There's only 35 people, I think, that are awarded that honor. In this moment right here, you can see how much fun everyone is having with the planes flying over a few of the crew members and the camera trying to get the best shots. And for the answer to our trivia question, the character portrayed by Kelly McGillis is based on Christian Fox, a civilian flight instructor the producers met on a visit while doing research to prepare for the film. Miramar was a very different thing. The water survival training was heinous. I had a little freak out. I was petrified. I was like, okay, am I gonna be able to do this? Fox eventually rose through the ranks at the Pentagon, retiring in May 2014 as Acting Deputy Secretary of Defense, the highest post ever held by a woman at the Department of Defense. You just can't create this kind of experience unless you shoot it live. In order for us to accomplish this, we have the greatest fighter pilots in the world working with us. 
We're working with a brand new camera system that allows us to put six IMAX quality cameras inside the cockpit with the actors. One of the things I didn't get filmed during the Top Gun first one was getting catapulted off of the uh, aircraft carrier. Uh, so I did on this. And I got to do that six times. We get an in-depth look at Tom's P-51 Mustang, his plane in real life that he just casually brings onto set one day. The P-51 Mustang that's featured in the film is Tom's, and it's a beautiful aircraft. Even the Top Gun pilots kind of geek out over his P-51, which is saying something. During an interview with Seth Meyers, actor Miles Teller went on to explain a weird allergic reaction to a jet while filming. Didn't you have like a like an allergic reaction to a plane or something? My blood work comes back and I have um, flame retardant pesticides and jet fuel in my blood. Oh my God. So what do you guys think about all this? Did you know that a lot of the scenes were real and the reason why it took them so long to shoot this film with all the training that was involved. Let us know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Make sure you subscribe with notifications on for more videos just like this. That's it for today though. We'll see you all next time with a brand new video.